Hello, my name is Jeff Baldwin and I am a CMMC provisional instructor and also a licensed training provider. Uh, but the point of this presentation that you're about to watch is just to talk about the five W's of CMMC, December 2022 edition, which means that this is the information current as of today. So if you're reading this in the future, some of the information in this presentation may no longer be accurate. So I always want to preface that with the date of the presentation. So the purpose of this presentation is to give a short overview. So if somebody has never heard of CMMC before, or you know they heard of it two years ago, but they're not up to date of really what's going on with it, we want to answer some of the five W's, which are who, what, where, when, and why. And bring awareness to the latest information and introduce people to CMMC who have never heard of it, like I mentioned before. So in order to do that, we're going to go through an agenda, first some of the prereqs, and then right into those five W's, so we can get right into it. So in order to understand some of the conversation around the presentation, here's some of the prereqs that you kind of need to be preloaded with. First is just the FAR. Um, 52.204.21 for basic safeguarding of covered contractor information systems. The core that I kind of extracted out of there just really to understand is that what is a covered contractor information system? So those are things that are owned or operated by a contractor that process, store, transmit federal contract information or controlled unclassified information. So CUI, FCI, understanding what those information types are and when a system that is owned or operated by a contractor processes, stores, transmits, uses those two types of information, then they kind of come into play for CMMC. And then if you just needed to know what, what does an information system mean, more generically, that's a discrete set of information resources. So you have those system components when combined together allow um, for the collection, processing, maintenance, use, sharing, dissemination, or disposition of information. So those two concepts, just get a brief understanding of it. We're talking about um, contractor information systems, covered contractor information systems. So if you're thinking of a federal information system that's going to go under FISMA, RMF, that's something separate. We're specifically talking about things that are governed by um, contractor side of things. So what are, what is that for DUD? That's the DFARS clause 252-204-712. That's where they talk about safeguarding covered defense information and cyber incident reporting. So within covered defense information, they're talking about controlled and classified information as well. Uh, DUD specific controlled and classified information. Uh, but then the NIST and 171 gets called out in the 7012 clause as if you do have control and classified information on your covered contractor information system, then you will uh, implement and apply all the requirements from a 171. So with that quick background, that gives you a good understanding when we're going to talk about CMMC and how things fit together. So the first step you, what is CMMC? Um, the acronym itself stands for the Cybersecurity Maturity Model Certification. CMMC 1.0 was the initial version, and that was outlined in a DFARS case 2019 D041, uh, which was published in September 2020. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. Uh, and then the CMMC 2.0 was published in November 2021 after an internal review by the DoD. The image there is taken from the DoD CIO uh, webpage for CMMC. And it basically shows on the left CMMC model 1.0, which had five levels. And then on the right, we have CMMC model 2.0, which has three levels. So if you're seeing marketing documentation that talks about five levels, uh, that's probably outdated marketing information, and you need to update that to CMMC 2.0. Uh, we mentioned FCI, uh, that federal contractor information. That would be a level one in both models. So the level one, uh, 15, 17 practices, um, and that FAR that was in the prerequisite, it talks about 15 requirements, and CMMC 
1.0 model that was 17 praxis. Basically, they took the ninth, the ninth requirement and they split it from one into three. So it's dealing with physical. It just had some um, semicolons between it. So they just broke it out. The requirements didn't change. It just kind of added to the number. So not a huge difference there. Uh, and then the 110, that's the 110 requirements that come directly from 8171. And this is also introducing a concept that we'll talk to in two slides, which is triennial third-party assessments for, for um, covered contract information systems that are at level two and at level three. So we'll talk about that a little bit later, uh, but those are kind of the three levels of the CMMC model as they currently exist. If there's a CMMC model 3.0, it may change this, but it's unlikely to change it. Uh, the one thing that is annotated there uh, for level three that is based on 8171, it's cumulative. So on top of 8171, you would also have 8172, which they haven't selected which uh, practices or requirements that were, they're going to put into the model yet, um, at least publicly. They have not disclosed what those things are. So who created CMMC? It was originally sponsored by the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Statement, or ANS. And when they did that, they established a no-cost contract with the CMMC AB. Uh, which is now known or doing business as the cyber AV. And the whole point of that is to stand up an ecosystem uh, with an ISO accreditation model where the AB is the accreditation body, which then accredits certification bodies, which would be the CMMC uh, third party assessment organizations or the C3PAOs, not to be confused with the C3PAOs for Star Wars fans. Um, but um, so with that, the certification bodies are the ones that would be certifying an organization seeking certification. So now you can think of it in terms of a conformity assessment. So the C3PO comes in and says, do you meet the standards here, the minimum standards, right? And then they say, yes, you meet the minimum standards. Here's the proof that you meet the standards through a certification. And then you're able to show your certification to other organizations as proof that yes, we have the protections in place, so you may share your CUI with us. Uh, and then going on for the who, uh, who is now in charge of it is the DOD CIO. So that program management office for CMMC transitioned to the DOD CIO. Stacy Boschanik, if you hear that name, is uh, the chief or director of of cybersecurity for the DIB, and then under that is Buddy D's, which is overseeing the CMMC program now. So those are two names if you hear them. Those are the, the duty folks involved with the CMMC for leading it. So why did we create CMMC? Uh, for, through a variety of sources, right? Through DOD IG, through DIBCAC assessments, which is there in the first uh, bullet. Uh, the DIB uh, Cyber Security Assessment Center. Um, so with 800-171, right, remember that's a requirement from the DFAR 7012 clause. DFAR 7012 clause says you will have 800-171 in place by, you know, 2017, right, the end of 2017. Um, but then they were doing assessments and they're finding, hey, contractors don't actually have that in place. So what CMFC really becomes is a way to independently verify that those requirements are put in place. So DIBCAC can't do the scaling of it. So every government agency is limited by the amount of billets they can have and funding. Uh, but if you outsource that to private sector, which they've done through that no cost contract, now you can scale up uh, as needed, right? So you're not, you don't have a billet limit. Um, where you can only have, you know, 50 FTEs. So that that limitation of billets are removed when you do that. So having the CMMC program uh, allows the DOD to have an independent third party to assess uh, these organizations in the DIB to ensure that they are actually implementing their 800-171 requirements. Uh, 
So that's kind of the driving factor. There's other factors too, but the primary factor was, hey, you're not doing 8171, so we want you to do 8171, so now we're actually going to test you against 8171, right? Versus before, which was mostly a self-attestation model where organizations would just sign off and say, yep, we got it in place. So when they did that review for CMMC 2.0, a lot of the primary goals are there on the slide. So assuring the accountability, enforcing the standards, and then public trust. Um, so those are all on the DoD website, uh, DoD CIO website, so you can check out further into those. Uh, we're moving on. So where is CMMC intended? So going back to that prereq, right? Uh, we apply these to covered contractor information systems. So if you don't have FCI, you don't have CUI, it's not going to apply to you. Um, so how is it getting implemented? Through contracts. So once the CMMC is fully implemented, um, basically you will have the 7021 clause there in red. Um, so that 7021 clause, when that shows up in contracts, will specify what level of CMMC do you require on that contract in order to win it at time of award. So at time of award, do you have that certificate? If not, then you can't win the contract. If yes, then you can win the contract. So like we mentioned for a level one, uh, that would be the FCI. If the contract's only going to deal with FCI, it's going to be level one. If it's going to be CUI, it's going to be level two. And if it's going to be high priority, then some subset of CUI will be level three. If you can think of that in terms of missiles and satellites and space and intel and all that good stuff, that's probably where you're going to end up with those level threes. Um, and then that case that we mentioned before, um, it has, also has two other clauses just to be aware of the 7019 and 7020. Those are in place. They do hold up um, contract awards. So if you don't have a supplier performance risk system or a SPUR score, SBRS score, if you don't have one of those, then it can hold up your contract if your contract includes those clauses in it, uh, which, which are in effect now. Whereas the 7021, that's not currently in effect. So that goes right into the next slide, which is when is CMMC expected? So they are going through that rulemaking process. The earliest they kind of indicated was March of 2023. Um, that might slip a little bit. Um, so it might end up being in the summer uh, instead, but there will be some sort of rule that comes out in 2023. Um, and it may be an interim final rule or it may be something else but we'll find out when that comes out uh, the expectation is that once that rule does come out that we'll start seeing contracts that include the 7021 clause um, i wouldn't expect it to be a lot um, initially uh, because once that kind of opens the floodgates then we can start seeing cmmc certificates being issued uh, but then it's going to be contingent upon the availability of assessor. So if it comes out and you know it says 30,000 contracts in 2024 are going to require it, then that's going to be unlikely just because there won't be enough assessors and assessment teams and the organizations themselves may or may not be ready either, right? A lot of people have been pushing the kicking the can down the road because they're waiting to see what happens with this program. All of that aside, 7012 Android 171, those are all requirements already on the books today. Um, so CMMC is really just adding that independent third party verification and validation, uh, which has been missing, which has been in limitation just because the DIBCAC can only do so many assessments a year. Um, so that's kind of what we expect to occur. Um, moving parts, that's why I dated the presentation, right? So the presentation. Uh, we'll probably do another one of these when we have more information after rulemaking. So with that, the kind of main reference used for the slides, if you want to go check it out, and I was mentioning it a few times, is that DoD CIO website for CMMC. But otherwise, if you have any questions, then feel free to reach out to me in a variety of ways through contact form on 
spacecoastcyber.com. You can email me direct or engage with me on LinkedIn, follow me on LinkedIn. I do post on there. Uh, I've had a few articles from, from over the years and post these videos and everything else on there. So I hope you found uh, some benefit from this presentation and I hope you have a great holidays and I'll see you in 2023.